In this video, we're going to go through the process of setting up a simple cam toolpath using an existing drawing. Our design is going to be in millimeters, so we can quickly change our units in our document to millimeters, and I'm going to set it at default for now. Now that my grid has changed, I'm going to go and create a, a new sketch. And before I do that, I want to right click the top and make a new component. That way I have ultimate control over this individual item. So under new component, we can see it's active because the bubble is selected. Now I can create my new sketch. Once my sketch planes appear, I can select them physically, or I can just go down to my origin, and I wanna make sure that I select the XY plane. This way we're drawing on a flat surface, and when we bring this to the machine, it's in the right orientation. Now that the sketch menu has appeared, under insert, we're going to insert an SVG in this particular case. Now before I insert that, what I've done is taken this design from Thingiverse here, Ducky the Scientist's laser cut paper calipers, and just manipulated them a little bit. You can download the design here. It looks like this if you open it in your browser. It's just a bunch of lines. I've taken away all the detail. The easiest way to download this is to right click and save link as. Once you do that, you can edit the design further in Inkscape if you really want to. But what I did in Inkscape was double check my measurements here. So this design is in millimeters and this will come in handy once we import our object. Back to Fusion 360. Uh, again, I selected insert, insert SVG and I'm gonna click this file folder that pops up and find the SVG that I downloaded. It might take a minute to load the file and all the vectors. Once it appears, we can sort of manipulate its placement. I know that the orientation here, this should be cut in quadrant one. So we can physically move our calipers and get it pretty close. And for this particular design, I think that's okay. As long as everything is in the first quadrant and we can see that we don't hit these lines. Our stock or our material is a lot bigger. So we'll just know that we're pretty close to the origin. In future designs, we'll make sure that we're tacked to the origin. Um, and when we look at the rest of this, our Z angle is gonna stay the same. Our scale needs to change and I check the measurements and the distance from this corner to this corner, which was easy to get in Inkscape, this corner to this corner. The real design is 261.37 millimeters. In Fusion, it actually shows up as 69.155 millimeters. So if I divide those out, that'll create a scale of 3.77948 if we want to get pretty close. And we can see our design is much bigger. And again, I'm going to zoom this back out and bring it up in that first quadrant here, pretty close to the X and Y. Now I know that my design is the correct scale and it's the correct shape. So this is something that we need to take into account while importing other people's designs. Everything else looks good. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've got a sketch that I can manipulate. Once the sketch is properly inserted, let's check for any inconsistencies. We know that our dimension should be correct based on our scaling, but we notice that this part here is missing the upper arc. In our original design, there's a full arc at the top. So it looks like that circle got cut away on the import. And this piece over here is not a solid object. So somewhere there's a break and we're going to solve this first. And there's a couple ways to do this. We can create a circle and use the center point or two ends to create a diameter, or we can use the arc tool. I'm going to use the three point arc tool, make sure that I get a box point here and I'm going to use the same on the end point. And you need to be careful, make sure it is exactly that end point here. You can see it jumps just a little bit. I wanna create a tangent arc, and you can see that circle 
and line, create a tangent arc, and that's complete. The next one that I'm gonna do is extend, and my guess is this line is a little messed up, and if you see using the extend tool, there's a little gap. I'm gonna extend this curve on this side, and that completes my shape. I'm going to stop sketch, and I've got a full design. Using the E on the keyboard or extrude, we're going to extrude this, the distance of our manila folder, and we're gonna select everything by just clicking here and dragging over. And that includes the holes in this case. If you'd like to cut the holes out, you can select just those particular faces individually. For this one, make sure you add that circle. And the manila folder was about 0.16 millimeters in thickness. And this will become a new body. And I'll hit OK. It's hard to see since our object is very thin, but if I zoom in, I should have a thickness to my material right there. From here, I'm going to save. And for me, I have a folder for this class. And I will save that here.